We think it's uh, three to four years ahead of the competition on that front. Um, so from that perspective, you know, our expected value for Tesla by 2024 is still 7,000. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, we're watching some clips of ARK Invest Tasha Keeney talking to Yahoo Finance about their $7,000 Tesla stock price target. If you're watching this after the stock split, that's $1,400 per share. So let's see what Tasha had to say. But first, hey guys, if you're in the US and you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account and fund it with $100, you get two free stocks, one of them valued up to $1,400. The Webull offer expires at the end of this month, August. Yes, it's your last chance to take advantage of the two free stocks offer. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. Let's bring in Tasha Keeney. She is an analyst at ARK Invest and covers Tesla there. Um, Tasha, let's talk about what we have seen in the run-up to this stock split. This is taking effect on Monday. As far as we understand, it doesn't change the fundamentals of the company, but it seems like investors just can't get enough of it. Yeah, well, I you know, I, th I think you nailed the point there is that it, it doesn't really change the fundamentals of the company or or the story. Um, so, you know, I, I think um, from from our perspective, uh, you know, a stock split now, especially with fractional shares, um, shouldn't have a, that big of an impact. Um, but of course, you could see, uh, you know, some price appreciation from investors basically sort of misunderstanding it, thinking that it might be cheaper. Um, but, you know, the long term story with Tesla, uh, our thesis is still intact. We think it's a leader in electric vehicles in um, full autonomy. And we think it's uh, three to four years ahead of the competition on that front. Um, so from that perspective, you know, our expected value for Tesla by 2024 is still 7000. 7000. Yes. I mean, it has the fundamental, uh, that's a pretty high target when you consider where it's trading at right now. I absolutely love the host reaction here. It's very telling of the wider finance media still having absolutely no idea what lies in the future for Tesla. Remember, Kathy Wood of ARK Invest was getting laughed out of the room, so to speak, around a year or so ago when she first started presenting this Tesla $7,000 price target. Nobody could understand why, what on earth, are you kidding, what a moron. I mean, you know, the stock was around three or $400 at that point in time. It's like $7,000, are you fucking serious? Well, it doesn't sound so crazy now, does it? In the last 12 months alone, we've seen Tesla stock trade as low as around $200 up to over $2,000. So we've seen a 10X change in Tesla stock price over the last 12 months. We don't need another 10X to get to $7,000 per share, do we? So we're much closer to $7,000 than we were to $300. So why is everyone still so confused about ARK Invest when they've demonstrated they knew more about Tesla and had greater insight into the trajectory of the stock price in the future than anyone else on Wall Street? I'll tell you why. It's because today, the majority of the people in the mainstream finance media, the majority of analysts, the majority of retail investors, the majority of bears, shorts and shills have absolutely no idea what the fuck they're looking at when they look at Tesla. They still think they're an automotive manufacturer. Sure, now a few people are starting to discuss maybe Tesla will supply batteries to other automakers, but everyone is asleep on everything else. The energy business, autonomy, I don't understand. $7,000? That's so crazy. I don't understand. Here's a pro tip. Until the mainstream finance media, Wall Street analysts, etc. react to these ARK Invest price targets a little bit more reasonably. Okay, cool. Yep. The autonomy thing. Yeah, cool. Let's do that. Okay, it makes sense. Totally. Until those type of reactions are happening, they still don't get Tesla. And in my opinion, that means there's potentially some great buying opportunities ahead. So pay attention to the reaction to ARK Invest price targets in the future. Once people start to accept them as reasonable and realistic instead of kind of respond with stunned silence or confusion, that's the point you know when people are finally starting to get the Tesla story. You know, you mentioned that there's this fundamental misunderstanding of what a stock is, but um, We've heard a lot of investors or a lot of analysts who've come on and talked about the potential in the battery day, uh, what could happen moving forward. I mean, is there a fundamental case for Tesla that has changed over the last month that has driven the stock uh, even higher? 
Well, I think, um, you know, I think in general this year, there's been a couple things on Tesla's side. Of course, uh, the, the earnings report was received well, the, the possibility of SMP inclusion. Um, but really, I think that during the coronavirus shutdowns, it's become even more clear. So if we just look at the electric vehicle opportunity, um, if you think of a, a traditional automaker who is investing in electric vehicles and, and basically how they're going to handle that when their core business is really sinking, I mean, that just becomes a lot more difficult. And they were already struggling with the technology. It's, it's not their core expertise. They have to build an entirely new car. If you want to copy Tesla, that means building it from the ground up. Uh, that just becomes 10 times harder in, in a time like now. So I really feel like Tesla's um, leadership in the field is, is solidified. As I've said previously, absolutely nothing fundamental has changed about Tesla's business in the last few months. What has happened, however, is a few people who are blinded by their biases or the lens through which they were looking at Tesla, thinking they're just an automaker, looking at the financials just with a cursory glance and going, oh, they're losing money, huh? They're now starting to realize what was obvious to some of us much sooner. Tesla is an incredibly profitable business. They're driving their costs down. They're selling every vehicle they're making. They're production constrained. They're dominant. They're agile. They're lean. They're efficient. And everyone else is f Yes, the pandemic has accelerated this transition. It's made it more obvious and more apparent that Tesla has won the decade. But again, this isn't new information. It's just some people took a little bit longer, needed a little bit more evidence, a little bit more obvious and a little bit more blatant to actually understand what's going on. And then, of course, on the autonomous front, you know, we still see Tesla has a much more scale than any other automaker, than any startup because it's using its customer fleet to collect data. Um, so that's still ongoing. So, you know, I, again, I, I think more, more so now than ever, um, it's, it's sort of as an innovator because Tesla's so far ahead, um, it now has that sustained lead. There's certainly a lot of excitement riding on battery day later uh, in September. What specifically are you expecting on that front? Yeah, so um, my my partner analyst Sam Course has done a lot of great work on on the batteries for Tesla. So um, one thing that we're currently excited about is there was some teasing of basically an improvement in energy density that would make it so that um, batteries would allow for electric jets. Um, so Elon Musk has talked about supersonic electric jets before, but said that you know the energy density wasn't there. Now he's saying that could happen in the next three to four years. What that means is that could be an incremental improvement for electric vehicles, but where it really makes the difference is for vehicles that fly. Um, so this could enable things like electric air taxis. Um, so actually, uh, you know, according to Sam's work, an electric EV tall um, uh, vertical takeoff and landing vehicle could actually transport you, for instance, in New York um, from downtown to the airport for the price of a taxi today. Um, so this could be, you know, very disruptive, very quick. You could basically fly over traffic. Um, and, and we think, you know, this could be a fully autonomous operation. And, and I think it's, you know, it sounds like a very far out there idea. Um, but the fact is we're, we're actually approaching that point today because of these chemistry improvements. It's pretty amazing to consider the fact that we're only three or four years away from vertical takeoff and landing electric jets from being feasible, viable, and potentially real. Those who followed Elon Musk or Tesla for a while will know he actually wants to make a vertical takeoff and landing jet. He's got plans for a VTOL jet already in his mind. It's just he's only got so much mental capacity and energy. He can't spin too many plates at the same time. So hopefully, three or four years down the track, Tesla's got their compact car out, they've got their van out, the Cybertrucks out. Maybe Elon's got the time to work on this design as well. Let me know in the comments below. Would you be excited to see a Tesla VTOL jet? So what you're saying is essentially we're not likely to, it's not about just the shift of Tesla going from a manufacturer to supplier with its battery technology, but being able to expand where they supply the batteries in place. Yes. Well, it, you know, it, it could exactly it could sort of open up opportunities for batteries across vehicle form factors. Um, so so we think, you know, batteries are sort of this um, innovative platform. One of the reasons we're so concentrated on the Medarc is because they enable disruption across a lot of fields. Electric vehicles is a huge opportunity, but it also enables things like drones. Um, so this could be in this case, the larger form factor drone that transports people or cargo. Um, but you, you could also have drones that, of course, trans transport smaller packages. Um, so again, this, this seems like a far out there reality, but um, it's, it's, it's here, it's now, and the technology is ready. 
Tasha, when you talk about the kind of levels you're expecting for the stock upwards of $7,000, um, is, is the battery technology really going to be the catalyst to, to get it there? I mean, it's interesting. We've been talking so much about, you know, what has been working for Tesla and, and the cars, the auto elements of it almost seems sort of like an afterthought, given the potential you're seeing in its expanding business in other areas. I'm sure there's a saying. I just I can't. What's it? Oh, that's right. No shit, Sherlock. First of all, we all know now Tesla is not a car company. They're a tech company. They make batteries and software. They happen to put those in vehicles at the moment, as well as some other products. But once again, Tesla's future isn't about automotive manufacturing. Yes, they will be a dominant player in the electric vehicle space, and they're absolutely shitting all over everybody with their innovations in manufacturing techniques for vehicles. But this isn't the core component of their future business. It's a small piece of the pie. The real money is in transportation via autonomous vehicles, in software revenue from infotainment, etc., and most importantly, in energy generation, storage, and distribution. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question because, so the expected value includes our assumptions for the, the core EV business, um, but also Tesla's uh, position in enabling a, a fully autonomous taxi network. Um, and actually one thing in our research that has changed over the past year, so Tesla's talked about launching this Uber-like autonomous service, um, you know, on the last earnings call, Elon Musk said that he's basically at this point where he can drive from his house to work um, with almost no interventions. He thinks they're very close to solving for full autonomy. Um, with our most recent research, so let's say Tesla launches a ride hailing network with human drivers. Mm -hmm. They basically have to do this to learn the ins and outs of ride hailing anyway, and to seed the autonomous network, or sort of that create the bones of it. Um, but this is also an interesting business opportunity for them because Tesla's costs on a per mile basis to drive a Tesla, it's actually cheaper than the average vehicle on the road or than the average ride hailing vehicle. So what that means is Tesla could take a higher cut than Uber and Lyft off of revenues. It could actually pay its drivers more. Um, it could offer, uh, you know, vertically integrated insurance offerings um, because it's much more vertically integrated than the ride hailing um, networks. And it could be a really interesting time to launch that right now with a coronavirus epidemic because pandemic, sorry, because um, uh, basically, you know, there are these gig workers that are looking for work. There are customers that don't want to take public transportation um, and Uber and Lyft are really hurting. Um, so I, I think it, this could be a big opportunity for Tesla. And it actually sort of de-risks that autonomous thesis, because if you if you think autonomous technology is crazy and it's never going to happen, well, OK, they can launch this ride hailing network. And that, you know, that, that actually gives them this, this software as a service like margin business model, this recurring revenue without um, solving for that big technological leap. Um, and if you do believe an autonomy it also gives them the data uh, to then feed that autonomous network and make it better this is really savvy thinking for mark i think this is a brilliant idea tesla is going to need to launch their network build out their infrastructure get used to it sort of test the water so to speak they're going to need to use human drivers before they launch their autonomous robo taxi network surely so tesla what are you doing guys come on in the midst of the pandemic low cost of ownership figure a way to get these vehicles in customers hands get more data help people earn some extra income build out your network reduce your costs i mean what are you doing guys come on quick launch that network tasha it's fascinating to to look at um all the all the parts that way let me ask you really quickly though about um what you see in the chinese ev market we had xbung which is seen as a competitor to tesla come to market this week we've also seen a huge run-up in the stock for neo also a competitor although that stock is down more than six percent today um, is that the case for growth in China still intact? And in fact, are we seeing it gain momentum now? Yeah. So, you know, the Chinese market is it's the most important auto market. And for electric vehicles, um, our forecast is 37 million EVs sold in 2024. China should be roughly a third of that. And actually, for autonomous um, taxis, we think the market value should be worth in the trillions at that point, around four to five trillion. Um, and again, China could be a third of that. So it's a really, you know, it's basically the most important market in both cases. Um, and the electric vehicle market specifically, uh, competition is very high. There's over 150 electric vehicle manufacturers in China. And it's a very unique market where the government has a lot of say in who wins. 
Um, so that said, looking at startups like this, um, you know, we, we don't think that a company like Tesla is going to be the only player um, in the Chinese, certainly in the Chinese electric vehicle market, but also in the global electric vehicle market. Um, I think it's really important to sort of see and watch how these companies get to scale. Um, one important thing to look at for both of them is how much they're insourcing uh, versus mm -hmm. outsourcing. Again, because that vertical integration has been a really key advantage of Tesla's. It's very important when you're building a software platform on top of the car. And it's also very, of course, very important for an autonomous network as well. Um, but you also get the full advantage of your battery mm -hmm. system, again, if you're sort of vertically integrated. So I, I think um, you know that both of those players are outsourcing some parts. Um, so I, I think sort of watching that story and, and seeing what the end product will be, how much will they insource versus mm -hmm. outsource is an important thing to look at. Lots of great points there from Tasha. I just want to hone in on two. Yes, China is definitely the most important market in terms of electric vehicles and autonomy. It's more mature in terms of the number of people that are using these technologies or moving towards them. Lots of competition, lots of innovation, etc., which is really good to see. So keeping an eye on Tesla's progress in China is critical. And the second point there about Tesla's so-called competition, totally agree. If you're not vertically integrating everything you possibly can as Tesla are, you're not going to succeed over the long term. This is really important. So anyone watching and thinking of investing in Xpeng, Neo, etc., there's nothing wrong with doing that, but you just need to be mindful, pay attention, and watch what the company is doing. Of course, when you're starting out, it's rather difficult to vertically integrate everything because you need to start up about 50 companies at once. It's not going to work. But over the long term, they need to see more of this stuff coming in-house. Otherwise, they're just going to get absolutely smoked by Tesla, who are vertically integrating everything. You cannot compete with a company that's doing almost everything themselves themselves because they'll be doing it better than you are if they're led by a competent leader check and if the company is full of a bunch of big brained engineers tick i'm Stephen mark ryan this is solving the money problem and i love you all and don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake. The Weeble offer of two free stocks is ending this month. Yes, the offer is ending. Last chance to get two free stocks with Weeble using the link in the description. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you get a free stock with Stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private discord server and more consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again